So now we have a 2006 Honda Ridgeline and it's here for some weird electrical anomalies. Warning lights on the dash, indicator lights coming on, messages on the dash. So I'm going to start this vehicle. Heater fan is on, nav radio is turned on. He said the nav radio wasn't working. So everything appears normal now, so let's start it up. Check engine light is on. High beam indicator is on. Yet the high beam is not on. Wipers work. I just started this a minute ago and it was acting up and now it's not doing nothing. Isn't that weird? A minute ago the headlights were surging on and off, the dash went out, but now it's working and all I did was walk in the shop. It appears that the nav system is actually working. Look at that. It says we're in the middle of nowhere. Well, obviously there's some issues with this thing. Hopefully it's going to cough up some network codes of some kind that'll give us a hint as to where the problem is. But I see the headlights aren't flickering anymore. They were like going bright, dim, bright, dim, bright, dim, bright, dim, as if the alternator was cutting in and out. But now it's not doing it. Obviously we do have the check engine light on and I'm not sure why the high beam indicator is is lit up unless that's daytime running lights. Let's turn the headlights on. Yeah, that was daytime running light indicator. Well, everything seems to be functioning properly except the oh, charge indicator light is on and the check engine light is on. Maybe this thing has got a bad diode in the alternator or a bad alternator period but now it's stopped acting up and he said his nav radio wasn't working but now it is oh well have a look so we're going to try this Honda Ridgeline and see what it does again tonight battery warning light on, the check engine light on, it's not doing what it was doing the other night when I started it up where the headlights were flickering, going bright and dim, bright and dim, kind of as if the alternator was dying. Well, we're going to bring it in and scan it. So we have a VTM-4 light on, and we have the charge indicator light and the check engine light on. Okay, let's throw the scanner on and see what's going on. So that would explain the charge indicator light. It appears the alternator is not charging. Could use a battery cable cleaning as well, but that's minor. Have a quick look here, make sure there's a belt on it. There is the alternator on this thing. Oh, right down there. Isn't that special? Now we'll have a look at the wiring for the alternator. Okay, so I haven't scanned this before, so it'll be a new record. Let's see if it automatically IDs. I got a battery charger on it right now and the key on. I'm sure we're going to have fault codes related to the charging system alternator, but I'm curious as to whether or not it might have had a diode failing that was causing network issues or even just low voltage. Multiple computers could shut down at different times because of low voltage. He never complained about a starting issue though. Let's do a code scan. See how quick this is. 06 ridge line. 
collecting data. Please wait. Well, I'll pick up when it's finished scanning. Okay, so here we go. Scan 15 controllers, codes in lots of them. CAN communication code in the PCM against the gauge cluster. Charging system voltage high. Catalyst efficiency code, probably not related. It probably needs a catalytic converter. Alternator B terminal circuit low voltage, so that's probably charging system mission issue, catalyst code, high voltage in the ABS, CAN failure, yaw rate sensor failure. This VTM4 light he said was on prior to this hocus pocus with the instrument cluster gauges and other warning lights. So it likely has a left front wheel speed sensor failure. That's what it's flagging here. Uh, relay control module lost communication with gauge cluster. Power supply circuit input error for relay control and open in the in car temp sensor. Uh, MICU, what is that? Mechanical instrument cluster unit. Lost communication with gauge control module. HVAC module, open in the in car temps, keyless at relay. That's all the same module. Power windows, same module. Security, all body electrical codes, same module, same codes. Semiconductor fuse. What the heck is a semiconductor fuse? Oh boy. All body electrical codes. Well, obviously we've got to fix this charging system concern first. First and foremost, because you have to have a good battery and a good alternator before we can judge any kind of network problems. I am going to clear all the codes out of everything right now. Check, it, check the alternator wiring, make sure it's an actual alternator failure. And then we're going to look at this... Uh, uh, where did it go? Left front wheel speed sensor failure, this 21-1. So, let's see, go back. This scanner keeps a record of all these codes. And we're going to clear all codes read by code scan. Key on, engine off. Yes, continue. So it shouldn't be over voltage now because I have a clean battery charger hooked up to it. It's set at 13.4 volts. And we'll go through this and, and then uh, position it on the hoist so I can check that speed sensor. So there's the speed sensor signal spinning the wheels by hand because it's got a differential in it. Both tires turning at the same speed. Similar signals. I was spinning it with a ratchet there. So I cleared the codes from the uh, VTM-4. I guess that's a 4x4 system. And uh, nothing's come back. We're going to have a visual inspection of the ABS wiring. So having a look at the speed sensor in the left front in the steering knuckle runs on a reluctor that's probably part of the CV shaft or pressed on the end of the CV shaft there's no play in the wheel bearing looks like uh, lower control arm or lower ball joint was changed fairly recently as well as front brake pads and rotors I don't see anything obviously wrong with the wheel speed sensors wires I got the key on and I wiggled the wires and I haven't heard it set any fault code everything looks secure like I said no play in the wheel bearing and back here in the back you see it's got new rear struts coil springs on the shock new stabilizer links and the rear brakes have been done fairly recently as well so nothing stands out here and this code hasn't come back so I think we're gonna fix this alternator and then road test it and see 
what sets. I'll also check to see what's common to cause this code. So here's a case on Identifix with a VTM4, which stands for Variable Torque Management, four-wheel drive, I would imagine, and a code 21-1. So ABS unit sends the wheel speed sensor signals to the VTM4 system. Verify wiring harness between the VTM4 control unit and the ABS control unit is okay because this one had the same type of code, yet the VTM4 system was reading it okay. Uh, wiring. All right, let's have a look at the alternator. So this is the troublemaker chart for the P16BB, alternator B terminal circuit low voltage. Tells you how the alternator is driven by the belt, target voltage of 14 and a half. Anyways, basically it's saying that code sets when it sees low voltage on the output terminal. I did check the output terminal and it has voltage or power on it, so the fuse is not open. There is a main fuse in that circuit right there. So then there's an IG terminal, which I believe to be ignition. Yes, it comes from the ignition, so we can check that one, no problem. Then we have a C, alternator C, maybe control, alternator L, light, uh, alternate, or maybe that's... They don't tell you how this thing works. They tell you to use the Honda GR8 tester, and I thought, well, that's just great to test the uh, alternator. Doesn't tell you how it works. Just follow the instructions with the tester. Oh boy. Well, we're gonna confirm what we can. This ignition wire. I already confirmed this B plus wire. Uh, it is very common for the alternator to fail and it is also quite common for an overcharging condition according to what I've seen on Identifix. So if these two wires check good, I'm gonna roll the dice and call the alternator. So at the alternator, I have power on the B plus terminal, the big battery terminal, it lights a headlight. And with the ignition on, I have power to this black yellow wire. Yeah, black and yellow. With the alternator unplugged at pin one, and it lights a headlight. Now there's three other wires in there. Uh, I would imagine that this one is for the light. The odd thing is with the alternator unplugged, the warning light on the dash is off where it was on before. So that tells me that this circuit is theoretically okay because uh, the, the regulator obviously grounds that wire to signal the PCM to put the light on. The only two wires in question are this white green wire and this white red wire. But given the fact that it's more than likely the alternator, I'm going to go ahead and replace it. They have it in stock. so. Hopefully that'll uh, alleviate the charging system problem and then we'll address the 4x4 issue afterwards. So we're changing the alternator on this pilot. Disconnect the negative battery cable. And remove the serpentine belt with the belt tensioner tool. Uh, there's a bolt on the top that's 12 millimeter head and a bolt on the bottom that's 14 mil head. Disconnect the battery cable, put it off to the side, there it is there. Take this little bracket off on the top of the alternator. And uh, you can pull the power steering reservoir out of its bracket and pull it up like I've done here. And you can weasel it out through this opening right here just barely. And basically reverse procedure to install it. Well there, it's back together and running. I cleaned the battery cables. 14.39 volts. Let's have a look at the diode ripple in this thing. It looks pretty clean. It must have some good capacitors in there. Fourteen point three seven. Could crop rod is falling off of this thing, so I'm gonna 
makeshift crop rod over there. You can see the alternator down there. Clean all the battery cables and connections, put dielectric grease on the terminals on the four wire plug. And then we should be good to go. Now we're going to have to see if that uh, 4x4 light comes back on now, now that we can drive it any distance. So rescanning this uh, Honda Ridgeline here, we've got the uh, VTM-4 77-1 returned. This is after disconnecting the battery. So I'm going to find out what that code pertains to. It just says powertrain system failure. So we'll have a look at the troublemaker chart for it. So this is the code that has come back is 77-1. And the indicator light was on. And according to the troublemaker chart, it says PCM is defective. <laughs> just like that. Let's see if there's a troublemaker chart. Check the PCM for DTCs. Diagnose and repair the PCM DTCs before troubleshooting DTC 77. Well, I don't think I had any DTCs in the PCM. Test drive the vehicle and watch the VTM4 indicator. Does it come on? Yes, go to step three, replace the PCM. Just like that. Three steps. Light comes on, change the computer. Wow. Check for loose terminal fit in the VTM4 control unit. If it is normal, replace the VTM control unit. Wow. I guess this increases the billable hours. Let me explain to the customer that you put a $1,000 ECM and it didn't fix it. Now we're going to change the, the, the computer that controls the four-wheel drive. And maybe that'll fix it. See, they check for loose terminals. If normal, replace VTM. Then it doesn't say what happens if the light's still on. Let's look at case histories. So this is what I suspected. If there's a code in the PCM, it turns on that VTM-4 light now. I may have had a code in there that I didn't realize. It may have been a pending code. So I'm gonna take this thing for a road test now and see what happens. Here's a uh, updated troubleshooting chart for that 77-1. My chart was from an older version of all data. It says basically if there's any DTCs in the ECM or PCM, fix that first, then troubleshoot 77. Clear the DTCs, test drive the vehicle. Does it come back? Yes. Go to step four. Update the PCM if it does not have the latest software or substitute a known good PCM. Test drive the vehicle, deck for DTCs with a Honda diagnostic system. Is it indicated? Yes, check for loose terminal fit. If, if it is normal, replace the VTM4 control unit. Well, we're going to go for a road test. So I took this thing for a road test and no warning lights came on. Mind you, it's only uh, the first drive cycle. So I'm going to look in the history of what was in the PCM when I first scanned it. I believe there was a catalyst efficiency code. And if there was, it's likely going to take a couple drive cycles for that one to come back. This has got 200 and roughly 246,000 kilometers on it. But on the road test, I noticed something. I had the headlights on high beam, and when I put them on low beam, there are none. <laughs> high beam, off. Which is kind of sketchy. If you put the daytime running lights on, we got those. But uh, no low beam headlights. You never mentioned that, but we'll have a look at the bulbs. So here are the codes when I scanned it the other day. It had left front wheel speed sensor, which has not returned. I don't know why that code was there. And there were some codes in the anti-lock brakes, can communication, yaw rate sensor, battery voltage high. But in the ACM, there was a P0420 code for catalyst efficiency. So I suspect the catalyst is probably compromised given the mileage in it and uh, it's it's likely going to come back turn on that check engine light because of the catalyst monitor and my take on that is it's going to turn on that vtm dash four light again vehicle uh, torque management so i'm going to have a look at uh, the maintenance monitors here and see if it's actually run them yet i doubt it 
click on engine. This takes a while to load. Oh, that's not bad. Be under generic functions, uh, readiness monitors. It only took it for one road test and a short one at that, so I'm sure it hasn't run the catalyst monitor yet. Or maybe it'll say it's failed. Okay, it's taking a while to load. Monitors completed since DTC is cleared. can do it. Alright, so the catalyst is not complete, EVAP system is not complete, uh, and the O2 sensor monitor has not run and, and passed. We can see if there's any pending codes. Uh, codes only, special functions might be under codes menu. Temporary codes maybe? No. I'm going to pull up some data. So here's the uh, post catalyst O2 sensors which are uh, simple zirconia sensors and they're both switching from about 100 millivolts to 700 millivolts. This thing's been running for a good half an hour. It's idling now but uh, they should be fly fairly flat lined if the catalysts are cleaning things up. So this thing's probably got a couple of degraded catalysts. I'll run it at fast idle and see how it is. So there's the post catalyst O2 sensor activity after running for about five minutes at uh, 1100 RPM roughly. And you can see they're both switching back and forth as if the catalyst is non-existent. So both catalysts are are compromised for sure. I'm sure in a couple of drive cycles we'll be back to that P0420. So I'll talk it over with the customer, but I think that he's going to either have to cough up some money for some converters or, or live with the lights on. And I don't know what that does to the 4x4 operation, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Thanks for watching. So yesterday this vehicle was here for an alternator problem among other things and I replaced the alternator assembly, put a remanufactured assembly on there and everything seemed to be fine. But today he's complaining about a belt squeal, a pretty significant one. Yet the pulley alignment looks perfectly fine by the naked eye and the belt looked in decent shape when I had it off. The idler and tensioner seemed normal. So I'm going to start this vehicle so you can hear this noise. So I'm going to start it up and you'll be able to hear the noise, I think. Got to rev it up, though. silicone spray on the belt the noise goes away for a few seconds and then starts to return so I'm going to take the belt off and use an alignment tool to check the uh, pulley alignment on the belt or on the alternator now this is the old alternator that came off I haven't returned it yet for core I had checked the groove dimension on it this one's pretty rough shape but uh, it wasn't making that kind of noise so we're gonna have a, a look we're gonna take the belt off so I've got this Deco belt alignment Tool. It's a laser alignment tool, and that's the part number in case you're interested, 93874. And I've got it installed, and right now I've just got it on the uh, water pump pulley. And you can see it magnetically sticks to the metal pulley. And then down there on the alternator, get the light out, I've got a target mounted in the same pulley grooves, and you can see that it's lined up to the pulley so it's not out of alignment at least not relative to the um, what our power steering pulley up top here now I should actually put it on the harmonic balancer but that's not very convenient so I'm not sure why this 
pull in if I put a stethoscope with the open end of a stethoscope down here the noise seems to be generating from this alternator pulley I'm not sure why it would be making noise and I can't just simply take it off hmm Now, I'm going to see if I can get a on the crank pulley down below. So I took the pulley off the new alternator. There it is there on the left. And it looks, other than being painted, it looks relatively good. Here's the pulley off the original alternator. It's got the same number of grooves. It looks the same, has the same offset. But I'm going to put this pulley on. Uh, a 7 8 box end wrench and a 10 millimeter uh, socket that you can take the pulley off. Make sure you use Loctite on it. So it's quiet at an idle. I'm going to rev it up. The only thing I can think of is that this pulley is a little bit narrower on this inside edge because the inside of the belt looked like it was wearing, it had a mark on it. But I can't see anything wrong with this pulley, but as you can hear, the, the belt noise is gone now. Uh, you can't really misalign the alternator, it only goes on in one way and nothing else is adjustable and it's a self-tensioning belt. So we'll see if it comes back.